In the early hours of Wednesday, 30th August 2023, the Gabonese military announced the overthrow of President Ali Bongo Ondimba in a military coup d'etat. The coup brought to an abrupt end the more than half century rule of the Bongo family over the tiny oil rich nation. The soldiers also announced the annulment of recent presidential election results that declared Bongo winner few hours before the coup d'etat. But who is Ali Bongo on Dimba and how did the country Gabon arrive here? Well, he is a man of many faces. To some, he is a spoiled playboy prince who saw ruling the oil rich Gabon as his birthright and a one time funk musician who stepped into his father's shoes to continue his family's rule. Others see him as a reformer, a man seeking to diversify the economy and boost Gabon's international status with an ambitious environmental agenda. In this edition on his Spoo Media, we look at the astonishing rise of Ali Bongo Odimba as well as recent events that led to his tragic fall. Welcome to this edition on his Spoo Media, your in-depth history channel. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so yet. Thank you. The man known to you and I as Ali Bongo Ondimba was born Alain Bernard Bongo in Congo Brazzaville on February 9, 1959. The circumstances surrounding his birth have been shrouded in controversy. Rumors have persisted for years that he was adopted from the southeastern part of Nigeria at the time of the Biafran War. But he has always denied this claim. He and his father, Albert Bernard Bongo, later changed their names to Ali Bongo Ondimba and Uma Bongo Ondimba, respectively, when they converted to Islam in 1973. His father was a second president of Gabon and ruled a small country for 42 years from 1967 until his death in 2009. His mother, Josephine Kamba, later Patience Debani, was a Gabonese singer. In 1968, when Ali Bongo was nine years old, he was sent to a private school in New Orleans, France, where he completed his primary education. He went on to study law and graduated from the Pantheon Sabon in Paris in 1978 and received his doctorate from Wuhan University in China in 1980. Interestingly, Ali Bongo on the Mart's life was never always about politics. He inherited a passion for music and sport from his mother, Patience Debani. During his youth, Ali Bongo was reputed for being a playboy. He cemented his reputation as a playboy with the release of his musical album, A Brand New Man, in 1977. The album was produced by Charles Bobbitt, a manager for James Brown, and with background vocals and music by James Brown's band. Within four years of releasing his musical album and influenced by his father, Ali Bongo switched his attention to politics. In 1981, he joined his father's political party, the Gabonese Democratic Party PDG. Two years after, in 1983, he was elected to the PGD Central Committee, making him a member of his father's cabinet. He soon became his father's personal representative and was elected to the PDG's political bureau in 1986. Ondimba held the post of High Personal Representative of the Republic from 1987 to 1989 and was then appointed as Minister of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation, a position he held in 1989 to 1991. However, an amendment to the constitution which prescribed a minimum age requirement of 35 years for ministers resulted in his departure. He was 32 years old at the time. From 1991 to 1999, Ondimba represented Bongoville as a deputy in the National Assembly. He became the president of the Higher Council of Islamic Affairs of Gabon in 1996 and minister of defense in 1999. He held this position until his father's death in 2009. Ondimba was re-elected to the National Assembly as the PDG candidate in Hyot Ogwe province in 2001. He became vice president of the PGD in 2003 and by 2006, he was promoted to the rank of Minister of State while retaining the position of Minister of Defense. He was re-elected as vice president of the National Assembly in 2006 and 2008. 
after the death of his father, President Umar Bongo in 2009, Ondimba did not immediately step up to replace his father, but he did enter his candidacy and won a subsequent presidential election with 42% of the vote cast. Amid allegation of fraud, there was a recount of votes declaring Odimba the winner with 41.79% of the vote. He was sworn in as president of Gabon on October 16, 2009. Rumors of ill health began to spread in October 2018, and on October 24, 2018, Ondimba was diagnosed with stroke. He was never seen in public until 2009 when he was seen walking with a stick as he attended ceremonies in the capital, Libreville. He speaks slightly slowly but still retained his position as president of the small oil-rich country. In 2019, an attempted coup d'etat failed and shortly afterwards, Ontimba announced his intention to run for re-election in 2023, making it his third term. Human rights groups claim that the Bongo family has turned Gabon into a kleptocratic regime, looting the country's natural resources, oil wealth, and rainforests. The Gabonese political opposition have also accused family members of embezzling public funds and running the country as their private property. With an oil-based economy, Gabon has long been seen as a country with great economic potential, but it has been plagued by endemic corruption. In 2022, Transparency International ranked Gabon 124th out of 180 countries on its Corruption Perception Index. Citizens said they encounter corruption in the most basic of procedures, including in job recruitment schemes in a country with high unemployment rates. Some said justice can often be procured from the court for a small fee as well. The Bongo family has also been involved in a series of major scandals, including the most recent one, the July 2022 indictment of five of the president's siblings in a French investigation of embezzlement and laundering of public funds. A seven-year corruption investigation by French police into the Bongo family, which reveals assets including 39 properties in France and nine luxury cars, was dropped in 2017. The family has, however, denied all the allegations. Meanwhile, a third of Gabon's 2.5 million people live in poverty, and basic social services are also lacking despite it having one of the highest gross domestic product per capita on the continent. However, his supporters point to his drive to diversify Gabon's oil-dependent economy in the face of declining oil reserves. His goal has been to move Gabon to a high-tech skill economy. But according to World Bank reports, the oil sector still accounted for about 38.5% of the GDP and 70.5% of exports in 2020. Critics also say the president has done little to channel oil wealth to the multitude of Gabonese that live in poverty. To his credit, however, Ali Bongo has created new investment in mining, a serious effort to develop a more environmentally friendly or environmentally sustainable approach to the use of the rainforest. The president counts successes in environmental conservation and regulation of natural resources as well as the construction of the Owendo commercial port as highlight of his tenure. But his critics say there is not much that he has done otherwise. The president's strategy has helped to protect Gabon's share of the Congo Basin's rainforest and help the country remain one of the world's few net absorbers of carbon dioxide. Consequently, in 2021, Gabon became the first African country to receive payment for reducing carbon emission by protecting its rainforest. President Bongo has used his own contact to press harder for a stronger economy traveling the world to find new investors and partners in countries like Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, while still keeping close ties with France. It was during a visit to Saudi Arabia for an investment conference in October 2018 that the president suffered a stroke. He was sidelined for almost a year, and in early 2019, following calls for him to step down, mutinying soldiers attempted a military coup. It was however not successful and the rebels 
were arrested by the authorities. After eventually returned to his post, Mr. Ali Bongo Ondimba embarked on a campaign to revamp his image, putting himself forward as a man of rigor that is bent on rooting out traitors and profiteers in his inner circle. But he has continued to struggle to shake off the perception that he was a sick man unfit to lead his country to greatness. Fast forward to Wednesday, 30th of August 2023, Mr. Ali Bongo Ondimba is under house arrest when his soldiers declared a coup for the second time in four years. This time, the coup is successful. Shortly afterwards, large crowds drove to the streets waving Gabonese flag and applauding the military. Bongo was seen in a video begging for his friends to make noise on his behalf. Clearly, many in Gabon are seeking for change and after 55 years in power, it appears time is now up for the Bongo family. Ali Bongo Ondimba married his first wife Sylvia Valentine, a French citizen in 1989 and the couple has four children. He married his second wife Inge Collins of Los Angeles, California in 1994 but Collins filed for divorce in 2015. Until the coup that happened on the 30th of August 2023, Ondimba resided with his first wife, Sylvia, at the presidential palace in Libreville, Gabon. Mr. Bongo has also been criticized over his prominent role in the Freemasons, a society whose Gabonese chapter he led as Lodge Master. In 2017, images of President Bongo a Real Madrid fan driving Argentine player Lionel Messi around the capital in a luxury car grabbed headlines. So what do you think about this coup? Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. For more on the coup that happened in Niger, click the video displayed here. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video and share with friends and family on social media. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.